Hi, welcome to AMM Moto. Hi, welcome to Moto Chiba. Hi, welcome to Maryland Moto. Welcome to Jed's Moto. Welcome to Special Case Customs. Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> so this is our multi, our multi-channel wrap-up, meet-up, group-up to recap the Motoberfest group ride, which I did not participate in. <laughs> too far so away. I don't, you, I don't get to talk. Talk talked about you all the time. Well, I'm going through all the video, so yes, I know. <laughs> but Alex, you put together a really awesome ride. Really, really great route. Yeah. Whew. Thank you. It was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, in fact we it was so good we ran out of daylight. We got <laughs> We did. We cut uh twenty five or thirty miles out of it. Yeah. Oh, you had to cut it short? Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna have to go back and finish it up. There you go. Yeah, well, I'm going that, through the um, going through the editing that I've got the footage from Jed's group, and I got the footage from you know Wes and Doug's group, and constantly it's just, wow, that is so beautiful. Wow, this is so amazing out here. Wow, this is so gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, so, no, I'm I'm pretty sure Wes was tired of me after about twenty miles. Uh, yeah, I'm going the whole time going, this is so beautiful. <laughs> Sean, shut up. <laughs> See, that's that's not at all what I remember you saying. What I remember you saying is, look, cheeseburgers. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Cheeseburgers, yeah. Right. All the way up until – so every time we saw a field full of cows, Doug would pipe up with, look, cheeseburgers. <laughs> and, cheeseburgers, yes. And one time, one time we passed a field full of horses, and I said, look, cheeseburgers. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think – those are running cows. <laughs> <laughs> the whole Motoberfest is really Jed's fault. Jed's, Jed's pinged me and said, hey, what are we doing before winter sets in? And I said, okay, well, let's, uh, let's all go for a ride somewhere. So, yeah. Um, you know, I'm thinking glad about you thought of that. Where people are located and things like that. And, um, you know, the, the majority, of course, the majority of the slackers on the Cafe Race podcast are on the East Coast. Um, so we kind of took advantage of the mid-Atlantic and, and I uh, put the thumb screws on Alex and I said, Hey, <laughs> how, about, how about putting together a route for us? We're all going to meet in Frederick and uh, see, see what you can do. And it came up with a really, really outstanding route. And it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's always cool to uh, show off the area that you live in and ride in all the time and don't really appreciate until you get out of the area. Yep. You're like, wow, everyone else is really flat and boring. <laughs> you should be really proud of it. It's a really amazing countryside just, just looking at it on the screen. Yeah, and I used to live at Summit Point a lot, in, which is just outside of Harper's Ferry. And we went through sections of Harper's Ferry I'd never been to before. So uh, awesome. it, was, it was kind of a treat for me to, to see that, that part of it. Of course, Hagerstown, when we got, we got stuck when they were setting up for a parade and we had to <laughs> that was amazing we just it was like i kept in my head i kept thinking look kids big bed in parliament i can't get left because <laughs> every time we every time we would would turn to get across we would go two or three streets down and there'd be cops and cones and that was it we had to go back right it, it started to become comedy practically and poor alex <laughs> he was doing his best man not to lose his <laughs> not to lose it sorry <laughs> that was i just self-censored did you guys see how i did that you're, very, uh, you're doing very well yeah he was doing his best not to lose it but you could kind of hear him slowly getting more and more frustrated and then once we got to the clear spot and we could finally get through it was just in a big sigh finally he said finally <laughs> and bam we were we were through <laughs> it was, it was a long a long parade route. I was surprised. I thought we'd do two or three corners and be clear of it. And it just, every time more and more and more, we kept <laughs> trying to zigzag our way around, trying to figure out how to get through, uh, get through town there. It was, it was, it was crazy. But, yeah. Apparently everybody in Hagerstown was on that pl parade route. <laughs> it was, uh, I even gave the city of Martinburg, West Virginia that on Instagram. Nice. <laughs> oh, no it wasn't, it wasn't Hagerstown. It was yeah, Martinsburg. Sorry. Martinsburg. Yeah. Yep. Here we're trashing poor Hagerstown, and it was Martinsburg. So sorry, <laughs> Hagerstown. But you know, you can't leave out um, good old Jefferson, Maryland, where we saw the guy taking. 
on the side of the road. Oh, that oh, was. Oh, you reminded me. <laughs> oh, Scott. So we're 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 going down. We're... He was. He totally was. <laughs> we're going down going down the road, and we're just getting ready to go on an overpass. And I think it was even Alex that pointed it out. He's like, look up here on the left, guys. And all you could see, it was a big full-size pickup truck with both doors open. And all you could see was this guy's white thigh and butt <laughs> wadded down on the side of the road. And he was, he was absolutely, he was totally taking a dump on the side of the road. Like that was his job. No shame whatsoever. Like, he no think, you know, shame. like a, like a four year old kid that can't hold it anymore. And you, you know, you, you deal with it. And I, but this was a grown up, this was an adult male just he had an emergency yeah. punching it out on the side of the road he doing had an emergency thing. i can sympathize i really can but uh you know find a park find a find a, a coat of trees or something yeah get behind a tree or a bush or something sometimes sometimes no, time. Time. no time but i want to tell you guys uh, especially um doug and jeds and steve i i commiserated and I did something on purpose today to feel your pain a little bit. I had to go to the office in Arlington and I looked at the weather forecast and it was clear in the morning and rain in the afternoon. So I packed my <laughs> rain gear and I rode to the office. And when I left the office, I put my rain gear on and I rode home two and a half, almost three hours in the rain. Really? It was, it was not the same intensity that you guys faced on Sunday, the Sunday, the third of Motober. Mm -hmm. um it was just like normal rain and uh, i have to say that the thing that failed me was my helmet and not my actual rain gear really? my helmet the the chin vents let so much water in that i ended up with mist and fog so i couldn't i could hardly see out of my face shield it was uh, on the um on the indian uh no i took the gs i take the gs to to work because it's a uh, it's 110 miles and uh, Indian only gets about 110 miles to a tank. <laughs> so I would have to get gas like three times to go to, to work and back. <laughs> I don't see the problem. I don't see the problem here. Yeah. But I did, uh, I did put a bag mount on it the other day, uh, like a luggage rack that I'm going to hook something to so I can do. Occasionally I can ride it to work if I want to. But uh in the rain, I wanted to have a little bit of weather protection for the, from the GS. But I just wanted to tell you guys that, that when I got home and I took all my gear off, my feet were dry, my hands were dry, my, the rest of me was dry. But I wore my rain jacket under my jacket that I tried the Nick Wax waterproofing on because I wasn't sure if it was going to actually work. It's that wash-in waterproofing. Um, so I thought, well, at least, you know, uh, my skin and my clothes won't get wet. So I put on my frog togs jacket and then I put my riding jacket on over that. And, uh, it must've weighed about an extra 10 pounds, but it did not get wet on the inside. Only the huh. shell on the outside was wet. So that Nick wax stuff, it, it works when you follow the instructions. So your beard is the only thing that experienced yeah. the rain, right? Yeah, my beard is wet because it was sticking out below my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, we are. We're missing one person. Yeah, we're missing one. Actually, we're missing a couple people. So we're missing our, our one rider, and that's uh, it's Berto. Yeah, he couldn't make it tonight. Right. So tell us about Berto. Uh, Berto is a guy I work with. Uh, started riding about two years ago. He bought one of one of my built bikes, and then he upgraded to a '92 Suzuki GSX 1100, and me and him Dude. ride all over the place. And he'd not been on a group ride before, right? This is really his first big long adventure. Well, it's it's his second because he joined me in Vermont for a meetup with Justin last year. And that was his first big group ride. But this was the first time he's actually ridden to the ride. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So this was his, this was actually the most he's gone in the entire weekend. Yeah. Since he's been riding. And I have to say, you guys have not seen the video of the three of you leaving the hotel, but 
y'all's bikes are so loud. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> Baffle what? It was so Those funny. are meant to be drilled out, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't, unfortunately, Scotty, we didn't get video of this, but uh, Doug and I were at the hotel already and because uh, we went up together and the three of them showed up and Jed's pulled into the little over, you know, hotels always have that little overhang so you can get out of your car and be dry when you go check in. And he stopped right there and he looked over his right shoulder, looked right at us, went, hit the rev limiter and held it there. Doors opening. Doors are opening. As the doors open. And suddenly everybody in the hotel lobby knew that Jed's had arrived. Plus the elderly woman with a walker that was just coming through the door at the time. Yeah, it was so awesome. Jed's has arrived. <laughs> but I, I thought I saw her smile. I, it, yeah. Probably. <laughs> he has that. It was probably an onset of stroke or something. It was, it was gas. <laughs> it was gas. <laughs> he has an effect on people. Uh, so so it, it, was, it was great to meet Perto. And, uh, uh, yeah, he was a lot of fun. He fit right in with us crazies, and, uh, and we had a we had a great time riding with him. It was uh, he, it was cool. And the other two people that t- couldn't make the ride uh, were Hal and Bill. Um, yep. Couldn't attend the ride, but they did attend the dinner with us, so we did get to meet with them. Yeah, that was really so. cool. Yeah, Bill's uh, buying a house or something, and that kind of got out of control on him a little bit. Yeah, and prevented him from joining us. Yeah. So it would, it was, it would have been eight riders, but we we we. Oh, and uh, um, Scott Scott Light couldn't make it either because of school commitments and stuff. Right. So, um, yeah, we got to hang out with Alex's wife and their son too a little bit. Uh, and I've already forgotten both of their names, Alex. If you could remind us of that. That's uh, Carrie and Jude. Carrie and Jude, thank you. I'm yep. so bad with names. Right there is my my Jude picture is right there. <laughs> drew me a little picture of a tractor that's awesome (laughs) someone say tractor (laughs) i was admiring scott's shirt from the uh mid-state tractor association (laughs) thank you doug you're quite welcome (laughs) i like it (laughs) so we had a it was a it was a fun ride all the way around and it, it was uh having split comms it would have been interesting to to hear what you guys were talking about, Jeds, but at some point, yeah, I guess Jeds, you lost communications, right? And and we could kind of tell from the back, <laughs> you know, I was riding sweeps, so, so uh, you know, Wes and I are in the back, kind of watching. And at one point, you kind of turned into Stevie Wonder, <laughs> and you're just riding down the road like this. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a good time. It was awesome. I mean, it goes to it's testament to Alex, uh, you know, root. I mean. I felt at home there. I, I, whenever I'm in like big hills, big mountains and windy roads, I just, I like, I plug in and I turned into what I am when I usually ride 95% of the time by myself. It was nice. It was just listening to some tunes and rocking and man, Alex, that road, that ride was just awesome. Yeah. I'm glad you liked it. I did uh, make sure to throw in what, like the one road that you had ever commented on one of my videos you were like i need to ride that road we rode that which road was that that was uh katakan hollow road okay um towards the end of the day right after the brief stint on us 15 okay they turned right onto it Mm. right yeah so we we had a long day right and we're we're getting ready to finish up the ride and we're 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 in Alex's haunts now, right? So he knows where he's going. And we get in around Camp David and uh and I, I radio up to Alex. I said, You guys go on, we'll catch up with you. <laughs> <laughs> and they were the four of them just gone. I mean it wasn't even ten seconds, right, Wes? I mean it was like yeah. two corners and we just lost them. Communication yeah. <laughs> gone. <laughs> gone. <laughs> Tom's dropped out and I figured, oh, we'll pick him up around the next curve and they were not there because <laughs> it was and I, I you know i felt a little i felt a little bad about that because poor doug who volunteered to ride sweet was stuck behind the slowest rider in the in the entire group because i'm very careful and cautious and i'm i'm out for a sunday ride all, every day 
Mm -hmm. But I thought it was really funny. Here I am. I brought my FTR, right? I'm on the fastest bike in the bunch, but I'm the slowest guy. So <laughs> I, just imagine if Alex had been on the FTR, maybe the other three guys wouldn't have been able to keep up with him. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You've never seen Jeds on a 250. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. It was weird at Camp David too, because uh, my GPS lost track of where I was. I was, you know, had me out in the middle of the woods somewhere uh -huh. and rode way over here and stuff. And so, Alex, what's the story on that? Um, yeah, I should have warned you about that uh, GPS and cell signal within about a mile of Camp David. Jammers. It's blocked. Yeah, that's. <laughs> and I was talking to your wife about it. She goes, "Oh yeah, whenever he goes out there, I, he goes dark for you know the ten minutes or so that he's over there. I can't. I don't know where he is." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that um that part i i did kind of warn you guys i was like hey well, i'll catch you don't turn on anything and um i just i didn't quite go the pace that i usually go by myself but i went at a pace that i figured would be fun and responsible with people following me mm -hmm. and um had a good time and I can tell that I wouldn't be able to follow Jed at the pace that he goes by himself. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you did a really good job as the ride leader too, because, um, you know, I never, like I just, I, I freely admit to being the slowest rider in the group, but you guys, you always waited for us at the turns. You <clears throat> communicated really well um, about, you know, when we were turning and which direction and all that kind of stuff. You did a really fantastic job as the ride leader too. Mm, so we're yeah. just going to continue to heap all the praise right onto top of your shoulders there. <laughs> you'll, you'll, hear that. you'll hear that. Yeah. You'll hear gravel, gravel, <laughs> gravel, gravel. <Yeah. laughs> I totally, I totally want Scott. I know that so much editing work, but if you can pull it together, a super cut of Alex giving everybody the heads up, you know, yeah. like left turn gravel. There's, I think he says, in the road about 47 times <laughs> but, uh, and we would be the only ones that thought it was funny but like i totally want to see that video <laughs> i think that would be right up there with the jed's intro the only thing that makes that difficult is his voice is so quiet on the recording yeah you know a lot of times you guys are talking at normal volume and then i'll hear burr, 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 burr. <laughs> <laughs> like i gotta rewind it back was that alex yeah he says uh, something in the road don't know what that is <laughs> well he had a code right so it was it was the gravel message in the road was usually an animal like a dead animal yeah right yeah chestnuts <laughs> oh the chestnuts yeah uh, they were uh black walnuts but <laughs> black walnuts close <laughs> enough same same thing <laughs> we're not eating them i think one of my one of my favorite parts of the running commentary was Every time we'd come to a little town or a county or some landmark, Doug would just make up who it was named after. <laughs> so when we got to when we got to the town called Jefferson, he's like famously named after George Jefferson. And I actually thought he was serious. I, I believed it the first couple of times. And then he did one that was really oh. ridiculous. And I realized he was just making this up. Yeah, Valerie Harper's Ferry. Yeah. <laughs> forgot about that one uh, that was a lot of fun i appreciated that doug the, uh, amen moto fact that's right. amen moto fact maybe yeah, the george jefferson thing was a callback to our last video right when doug right. wrote up so oh, i okay. pulled that joke on him when he was there yeah. nice <laughs> so here's here's an operational question where are we going to do motober next year hmm that's a good question um florida I would, yeah. <laughs> gonna do I mean, I was going to say that, but I thought that would be rude. The Mid Atlantic BDR. And say, what are going to do? Um, just Alex and I. <laughs> 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 but we'll put Scotty on the auto train. We'll pick him up at Lorton, Virginia, and we'll we'll probably do Mid Atlantic again. Um, I'd like to do something in Boone. I really like Boone. Boone has some great riding, and uh, Boone's got a great vibe to it. It's a nice college town. Where, wow. What what state is Boone in? North Carolina. Oh, okay. So maybe Boone, maybe Boone. That might work. Yeah. So wherever we go, we have to have good ice cream. I think that's the one requirement that 
Mm -hmm. have a good a good ice cream creamery place to go to. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. And to answer to answer your question, Scott, I got two scoops: chocolate and peanut butter, because that is the best combination of ice cream ever <laughs> in the history of ice cream. You had a cold Reese's. I did, and it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, that ice cream was fantastic. What Alex? Alex, what did you get? I got their um, apple strudel sundae. Ooh. Of, uh, two scoops of the apple strudel ice cream with caramel sauce and then a piece of pie crust jammed into it. Nice. Wow. He was set on a that menu. sounds pretty good. <laughs> it sure does. Pretty amazing. Jeds, what'd you get? Uh, I think it was coffee crunch something. It was Ooh. delicious. And Steve? I just got the plain apple strudel ice cream. With with oh. no pie crust? Yeah, no pie crust or nothing. It was still fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Doug? I did my usual, which is butter, pecan, and coffee. Mm. Yeah, everybody's going like, oh. <laughs> well, I'm I'm not a, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't care for stuff that's coffee flavored. But I understand that that you guys that are coffee drinkers enjoy that stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's funny. I didn't start drinking coffee until just a couple of years ago. So, really? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. No. Probably my fault. It's Probably. Scotty's plus. Scotty's my fault, fault for a lot of stuff in my life. Let's go get coffee. <laughs> Let's go get coffee. You want to buy a Mini Cooper? Let's get a Triumph. <laughs> Let's get two Triumphs. <laughs> Let's get a Triumph. Let's get another Triumph. He only, he wants you to get stuff first to see if it's any good, and then if you blow it up, he'll buy it. <laughs> and fix it <laughs> and if you don't blow it up he'll get one for himself right right oh my lord <laughs> but, uh, something Jed's... i've never quite picked up on were the explorer and uh um scotty's t120 bought at like the same exact time not exactly okay no the explorer came first he got his in february when i was still mulling whether or not i was going to get the t120 and he was looking for an adventure bike and we went to go look at the t120 again and he got lured into the back room which is you know yeah. by the sirens uh -huh. and um he got his in a february <laughs> and i picked mine up on april 1st so they're two okay. months apart right gotcha from the same dealership from the same salesman yeah yeah there you go so jeds i think we have to peer pressure you into growing a beard you are the sole beardless person in this session mm. <laughs> i grow beards really like poorly i, I censored too. myself there me. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, i'm disappointed you went and got a haircut since i saw you on saturday yeah well, you look really cool with long hair long hair and motorcycles don't get along you take off your helmet when you get to work and you're like <laughs> 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 yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you guys this uh, about our little Motober weekend. Um, uh, what would you have done anything different? Would you, what would, if anything, what would you have done different? Trailered my bike. <laughs> or, yeah, or thrown it in the back of the truck. Wes discovered the magic of trailering. Yeah, yeah, it's the first time. Uh, first time I ever did that. I put my bike on a trailer and and drove to the drove to the event. Uh, and it was, it was, it was fantastic. It was, it was really great. And uh, it was all fantastic until one of the tires exploded on the trailer on the way back home on Sunday. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> but I mean, how are you going to predict that? <laughs> Although watching, looking in the rearview mirror and seeing the one side of the trailer doing this with my brand new motorcycle on the top of it <laughs> was pretty exciting. Um, <laughs> But AAA came to my rescue. They were they were fantastic, and I put three brand new wheels and tires on that trailer this past weekend, and uh, it was amazing because I'm driving it to take it back to my parents' house because it's their trailer, and I could hardly tell that I was pulling anything because mm. the tires that were on it were so crappy that it it was just it was a completely different experience having brand new tires and wheels and the funny thing is is tires would have cost me well i'm not going to tell you because i got them through our parts distributor and i paid cost for them um 
X, right? But yeah. the tires plus brand new powder coated wheels were X plus ten dollars. So why wouldn't I get new wheels? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, trailer wheels are like made out of cheese anyway. So by the time the tires are bad, the trailer wheels are usually pretty roached. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I gave the two surviving wheel tire combinations to George to throw on a shelf for spares for him. But I said, you might not want to use them because if one goes, the other ones aren't far behind. And I spent the rest of the day at like 55 miles an hour in the right lane, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't messing around. I learned my lesson. So Jez, you didn't invite really enjoy your ride back home, huh? No, I mean, in retrospect, I'm glad that I did it. Uh, it was definitely one of the most challenging rides I've ever done. Just like you get on the bike and you're in rain and you can ride out of it in like 200 miles. Like that's usually what happens when I do yeah. like my big trips, like, I've done, you know, big days and I usually hit rain, especially on like my thousand mile days. You're going to hit it. The percentage yeah. is there. And, but you ride out of it. Even if it's raining, it's like, okay, you look at the weather map, you'll ride out of it at least two, 300 miles. And then you get that nice a hundred miles of, you know what I mean? It's West, you know, you guys know what I mean when it's like super dry and it's like you're wet, but the sun and the nice warm air warms yeah. you up. It dries you out. Well, I never got that. Never got that. <laughs> it just got colder and colder and colder and colder. And it just kept raining and raining and raining. And by the time I got to Vermont, like everything was like soaked. And I'm just like, I'm gonna, I guess I got to Stewart's in New York. I could finish the drive, the ride in one tank, which was 130 miles. I have 130 miles left. I'm like, I'm sorry. That's all right. This. We understand. And uh, Scotty censors me so much. Um, <laughs> sorry, buddy. And <laughs> I was, I, I just said, screw it. I'm doing it. And I finished the ride out. I actually burned the coils on my heat vest that I had on into my chest because I let the skin burn because I didn't give a, f and I just wanted to get <laughs> the ride done. And it was challenging. It was a super challenging. I get home. And you could see blue sky, but it was still raining. And I get in, and Shan's like, oh, it's, it's raining. It, it started raining. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> <if> I... <laughs> A little bit. And in the like, newspaper, like, the newspaper, art, news, in the newspaper article about that, it says, no one is sure why the murder-suicide occurred. Yeah. <laughs> but we think it might have been a domestic situation. That's oh, why I goodness. shot her, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it started raining. Oh, that's when the fight started. Yeah, yeah but from her perspective, how would she know? You know, right. that's just that's just awesome. Yeah, I I kind of wish I'd have been there to say exactly the same thing. And I was there when you guys left, and it was still it was already pouring down rain. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. From the from the maps, the look of the maps that morning, I thought everybody was going to ride. I thought you guys were going to ride ahead of it and get out of it and stay ahead of it the guys going north and i thought for sure doug was going to ride through oh, it yeah. and, and come out the other <laughs> side and instead everybody rode in the rain all damn day long yeah. the forecasters so, are like it's going out to sea yeah it's going to vermont <laughs> <laughs> it's going to vermont it's going to jed's house jed's yeah. invited the storm over for a beer that's right that's right <laughs> that beer tasted pretty good when you got home though yes it did Steve, you had a you had a similar ride home. Yeah, so uh, Jez and I actually we me Jez and Berto stuck together for quite a while, and it was after the the first two hundred miles or so we pulled into a gas station because I needed gas every hundred miles because my bandit sucks it, and uh, I pulled off my gloves and my hands were purple because they were just soaking wet. Oh man, frozen cold. So. I went in to get to warm my hands up, and I was like, "I was like, Jeds, don't even bother waiting. If you need to get home, you just go." And so he took off after he filled up. We, me and Berto, stayed at the gas station for about another forty-five minutes for me to actually get the color back in my hands. We figured out some better waterproofing and warmth situation for my gloves, and then we hitchhiked all the way back up to New York, and we didn't run out we got out of the rain about 50 miles 
south of Syracuse, so I had about an hour left to go. But and then like every single time it started like clearing up, birds would be like, "Oh, hey, look, the rain's going away," and then it would start raining harder. I'm like, "Dude, what are you doing to me?" <laughs> Stop, Stop saying that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have- I was gonna say, Wes, you were, you were asking about what what we would have done differently, and I'm kind of with Jed's on this one. I really wish I had the Bonneville on that ride on Saturday. Yeah. And you know, if I had a trailer, I would have trailered it up and to to ride the Bonneville on that. I just, uh, I mean, you know, BMW is fun. It's great for getting up there and back and stuff. But um, yeah, those are some Bonneville roads, man. There were some Bonneville roads in there. Would have been really fun. Yeah. Some well, naked we'll- bike roads. We'll remember that next time. Right. There we go. There you go. Because yeah. when, when, uh, when y'all came down to my place, when Jed's came, he was going to Florida, um, I don't remember where you ended up leaving your truck, but you drove your truck because you, you had to drive through the night, mm-hmm. basically, a couple times just to make the vacation time work. And uh, you got here, and we, we unloaded your bike, and we went for a ride on Saturday. And we had a real good time, and and then you very sketchily reloaded your bike back up uh, and kept on going. I guess you did. You leave your truck at Doug's place in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did. And then rode the rest of the way to Florida, and I thought that was a real, real good idea. And if if we go, if we do Boone next year, um, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Hey, Doug, I'm riding with you all weekend, buddy. <laughs> you know, I'm leaving my truck or whatever I've got at that point. Yeah, and. No and, and then, Wes, you'll have to pick up uh, Scotty at Lorton. So. I can do that. There you go. Do it. Got a, got a pool and a pond. <laughs> Pond's good for you. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, use, I'll borrow my daughter's pickup truck and hook a trailer up to it. We put your bike in the truck and my bike on the trailer. And there you go. But, you know, I, I was I, – Scott, it, it was, it's because of Scott that I did it. Um, or it sounds like I'm blaming him and I'm not. It's it's because of something that Scott said to me that I was willing to do it because he was like, do, do, do you want to be miserable or do you want to have fun? And I said, well, I want to have fun. He said, then shut up and put your bike on the trailer and take your bike and go have fun. Exactly. You know, because I'm, I'm, I had a gig Sunday night over in Charlottesville, which is about an hour and a half west of me. And until I had the big blowout on the trailer, I was going to go straight there. So I had to have my guitars and amps and all that crap with me for the show. Mm-hmm. And I can't, you can't get that on a motorcycle. I mean, I might've been able to strap one guitar there with my underwear. Yeah. But um, imagine the rain, dude, you'd friggin' it up pretty bad. Yeah, absolutely. So it worked out really well for me logistically, but I think even if I hadn't had to, to go do that show, it, it just, it, I, I get really weird about travel and I, I don't know why. And it's just one of those things. But once I made the decision, I'm okay, I'm going to take the bike on the trailer and I'm just going to go and I'm going to have fun. And if everybody makes fun of me, then everybody makes fun of me. I got nothing to prove to anybody. I've been riding for a long time. I got a lot of miles under my belt and I'm just going to go have fun on my motorcycle. That's not really suitable for a long ride to get to where I need to be. Mm -hmm. It's really well suited for riding around once you get there. Um, and all that anxiety and worry and concern just went away. Mm-hmm. And I, I started having fun. I, I was excited when Doug texted me and said, I'm leaving at, you know, like 12, 15. <laughs> and I started, I couldn't pay attention to work after that. You know, I had to wait. And I was like, man, I'm stuck here for another three hours waiting for Doug. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I started getting excited right away and I had a good time. And, you know, I really enjoyed myself a lot more than I think if I had, ridden my gs that i didn't trust instead yeah be worried about it the whole time yeah and, and you wouldn't have as I, much fun on those twisties yeah and i wasn't worried about nothing and i'm even less worried now because i got new tires on my ftr and got rid of that plug plugged rear tire so now <laughs> i've got <laughs> what did you put on it not uh, michelin no, not Michelin. I put Continental. <laughs> I put Continental Trail Attack threes on it. Oh, cool! And they're. Uh, How do you like that so far? Have you put well, any miles on them? Uh, I've had them on on other bikes. Well, Trail Attack twos. I've had on other bikes. I I like them a lot. I think they're real good, um, good response, and and they warm up pretty quickly, so you don't have to ride for you know like thirty minutes before you feel safe doing something 
nearly stupid. Um, and there was nothing wrong with the stock tires other than the only thing I didn't like about them was they're a little noisy. That's it. That's, that's my big criticism. That's Plenty changed grip. on the new ones. That's changed. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they're, they're, a, they're a basically a street tire. I think, I think continental calls them a 90, 10, but they're street tires. I wouldn't take them off road on a big bike. So we didn't make fun of Wes for trailing the bike, but we did make fun of him while we're on the ride. And Wes is going through a left-hand corner, and he's putting his foot out, and he said, "Hey, there he goes! He's doing the flat track. He's got his yeah. foot out. He's doing the flat track thing, going around the corner." And he goes, "No, no, I got a Charlie horse. I can't." Get <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a terrible cramp in the back of my left thigh, and I couldn't think of any way to to work it out. Um, <laughs> but I think I think I'm not drinking enough water is what it is. And I know that that can contribute to, to especially cramps in your extremities. So I've really upped my water intake. Not that you guys needed to know that, but you know, <laughs> there you go. So related to that. As, as, as Steve drains his bottle of, of whatever that is he's drinking. It's water. You guys are amateurs. Right. I never get cramps. Everybody let's do the simultaneous sip. <laughs> get your sip ready. Simultaneous sip. <laughs> Come on, Doug. I'm sipless. <laughs> I'm sipless too, yeah. <laughs> Alex, you were saying. So related to that uh, that first stop in Harper's Ferry where Wes was just dying on comms and was like, we got to stop. I've got this cramp. I don't know how much further I can go. Um, what I'd like to see a counter on the screen of how long it took from when we parked to when I go, did we already get asked to leave from the park ranger? <laughs> she was real nice about it, though. She was super nice about it, and she was really cool in that she let us stay until you were good to go. Yeah. But I feel like it was about four and a half seconds. I think you're probably right. <laughs> she did not. I don't even think everybody had their kickstands kick stands down before she was walking towards us. Like, literally, I think it was like, being literal, probably less than three minutes. Yeah. Because I remember, I think I still had my helmet on. I yeah. definitely still had my helmet on because I asked yeah. it through comms and Doug confirmed that, yes, we were <laughs> asked to leave already. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, in her defense, we were parked in a no parking zone. We so, were even in parking we gotta, spots. We I pulled in behind her truck. Yeah, yeah we got to paint right. a better picture of this, right? So we're we're at the train station where John Brown held up and the, the, all that cool stuff, and there's no parking. All the parking spots are, <laughs> and there's a whole there's a row of cones up, and it says no parking. And we all park right there. So that's where we parked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are for cars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she was she was really nice about it. She waved to us. Yeah, bye. Yeah, well, she's she writing was, tickets for all the other cars. She was. There's the train station. Can you guys see that? I see. Oh, there it is. Yep. yep. There's the train station. I only saw for a brief second a beautiful, beautiful, picturesque picture of a snow fallen woods. But then it yeah. turned into your, your, then it turned oh, into your iPhone. It's like a hole in your face. And it's like, oh, look. Yeah, you, you can't see it. But at the bottom of the picture, way off in the distance, is a Ural sidecar rig. Oh, right, right. I'll just slide it's, over a little bit. Move over. Let's see. Yes, let's see. Yeah. Oh, yep. oh, oh there really is one. Oh, okay. Stuck in the I snow, know. waiting for a AAA. No. <clears throat> yeah. Nah, two-wheel drive. They're powering out. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's, you know, it's funny. when I went. So I went back to the shop to fix the trailer and put that luggage rack on the FTR because I just left them both at the shop. And uh, while I was there – this big flatbed tow truck came up and there was a Ural rig on it that the dude had snapped the swing arm. Ooh. This, yeah. The swing arm broke. How the fuck and how? I, I don't know. Did he jump it? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I met the dude. He's kind of a big dude, but he ain't that big, you know? Um, but it just could be one of those things, you know, hit it at exactly the wrong time at exactly the wrong angle. And, physics is a you know harsh mistress um <laughs> physics and russian engineering that's that's right. Right. yeah but the <laughs> as the tow truck was pulling in of course it's this big flatbed tow truck diesel it's loud and you know making a lot of noise and it 
it looked like the truck was in some kind of distress because it comes in and it's like and it stops and uh the guy gets out and he unloads the truck and he's like well i don't know what i'm gonna do i gotta get this thing out of here and, and george and i are like what's going on he's like yeah i lost my clutch didn't you hear that on the way in <laughs> so the, the, the tow truck's got to go get a tow truck but he had to get himself turned around because he he was you know nose in and there he couldn't it was a huge it was a thing and uh, i really just kind of made me a little cranky because i was making a video right <laughs> and it was noisy and i had to stop and wait <laughs> so one of the other funny things in the videos and i don't i don't know if i captured it or not right sorry motober back to sorry that's okay yeah i'll yeah. bring it back on track i'll wrangle you back in again uh but but riding sweep in the back i got to see the effects of to the environment that jeds would cause oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what it's actually causing stampedes <laughs> in the fields of all the cheeseburgers and stuff and i've never seen cheeseburgers run that fast in my life i've never they actually it was a it like startled like a horse and they jumped and they yeah. all took off at the same time <laughs> a literal stampede a stampede yeah. cheeseburgers and and he missed it because he was already he down the road a piece. He didn't know and, the cattle were running. <laughs> right. The other one is at the, uh, um, where we got ice cream. Um, they have a petting zoo. And when Jed's left the petting zoo, he caught a stampede from the goats and the sheep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the kids in there. The kids uh, in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do it for mom. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need dogs. We have Jeds. <laughs> Order you guys, collie Jeds. You guys remember the dude that um, oh, God. drove up and got out of his truck just as we were getting ready to leave the ice cream place? And he, he saw the FTR, and I could tell he recognized it, but he came over and he's like, is that that new Ducati? And I just looked at him and went, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, then he looked down and he saw the badge on the side he was like oh it's the new indian yeah <laughs> i knew it was something yeah. i just i just looked stone cold at him and was like no no, no. <laughs> do i look like a ducati guy <laughs> i would be arrested if Take i bought a look. ducati and it would <laughs> i'm near not nearly svelte enough to uh, to ride a ducati but not it does exactly it does so. kind of have a little bit of a monsterish look to it you know naked bike, it, it's red kind of, at first glance the shape of the tank could be a monster what's the score in the game scott you guys really want to know it's a, a pitcher stool going on guys bottom of the fourth nothing to one houston okay game seven of the world series so now everybody knows when we're recording this there you go and that's by the our time version they watch, of the they still know who won. Newspaper proof of life. That's right, exactly. I would show it, but we'll get a copyright violation. That's right. <laughs> we'll get a yeah, we'll get a copyright strike on our video. This broadcast you know, is the property of Major League Baseball. There you go. Then we had a really nice dinner at the end of the ride. Um, and uh, yeah, that place was fantastic. Alex, yeah, at uh, AKA cool. Frisco's. AKA Frisco's. Right? AKA Frisco's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, fantastic food. Um, but we had we got to sit outside and make a lot of noise, and it was fun. And and, uh, and we all got interviewed by young Jude. By Jude, Jude interviewed us. So that I don't, Scotty, I don't know if you're taking a peek at that yet, but it's I haven't watched it yet. Nope. It's great. It is. <laughs> it's hilarious to too, because it. Jude's a cute little kid, and he's obviously excited, but he's also a little nervous, you know, because he's holding this camera. Mm -hmm. And and uh, Doug is over there like feeding him questions. Mm. You know? <laughs> ask him. Ask him about his mother. <laughs> <laughs> the little kid says, "So how's your mom? <laughs> is she single?" He took he took direction quite well. That's cool. uh, that, was a, that was definitely a highlight uh, of the dinner, as was the mac and cheese at that place. Oh, mm -hmm. mac and cheese. Uh, did you guys get exploded potatoes? Yeah. It's like their claim to fame. Yeah. Yeah. I got the exploded potato with something and mac and cheese, and I was just, it, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm sorry. And see, Are we Jensen, keeping I you up past it. your bedtime? Yeah. I still got to write up. 1200 word article tonight before i go to bed let us help yeah we'll write it for you 
you know what? I appreciate that offer, but um, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, no, I don't. I, just I appreciate don't, it, but my journalistic integrity just won't allow it. <laughs> well, you know what? You, you don't know the guy, so you wouldn't be able to help that. Oh, much. that will not stop us. It would just be, yeah, it would be filled with. <laughs> never stop me. <laughs> but see, Jeds and I did another smart thing on Saturday after the ride. Is we took an Uber over to dinner so that we could drink as much as we wanted to oh, and not have to worry man. about no uh, getting a DUI or crashing our bikes on the way back. Yep. And uh, it yeah, was funny. True. I don't remember if it was the guy that took us to the restaurant or the guy that took us back to the hotel, but he was just astounded that Jeds had ridden to Frederick from Vermont on from a motorcycle. Vermont? He could not wrap his head around it. <laughs> I mean, he really just, really, you rode it all the way? That's really? because it's stupid. <laughs> it's not stupid. You're, gonna ride you're stupid. Somewhere? You're going to ride somewhere from Vermont, and you're going to come to Frederick? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was. Out of all the places, and you that's, came that's to Frederick? more of the train of thought. <laughs> you, could, you could go anywhere you wanted to, and you came here. What's the matter with you? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Lost in Hagerstown. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, no, Martinsville. Martin, Martinsville, sorry. Martinsburg. <sighs> Martinsburg. <sighs> Martinsville here in North Carolina. Home of Martinsburg Downs. Martinsville is in Virginia. Oh, that's right, Martin. Yep. Is it? They really got a racetrack, right? Got a racetrack yeah. there. Yeah. I yeah. live in Virginia. I didn't know that. You also well, you don't. Yeah, we. There. When it comes to geography, we're not expecting you to know anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, but I know. Don't I, worry about it. I know <laughs> don't now. Worry about it. You guys, <laughs> don't worry. I'm going to take all this embarrassing stuff out, Wes, so you don't have to be ashamed. It will just ashamed. stay within us. I'm not ashamed. I never studied American geography. I studied Canadian and European geography when I was in high school. Oh, sure. If you want to know where the Volga meets, you know, the the Adriatic, but how but, but, often but where's the twin Canadian cities? geography come in use for you? You know what, Alex? That's a really good question, and good I have question. I have an answer, and the answer may astound you. No, my knowledge of Canadian geography made me an absolute juggernaut when it came to Trivial Pursuit in the late <laughs> 1980s, because that game was invented by a Canadian, and fully 40% of the geography questions in that game related to Canada, and I wow. crushed it every time. Nobody would play with me after a while, because I always got the geography questions right. All the I Canadian knew. ones. That's right. <laughs> all the Canadian ones. So that's exactly, it was completely useless in all of my life, except that I know which side of Calgary Saskatchewan is on. Right. When um, you're playing Trivia Pursuit in the 90s, drinking wine coolers with your friends. So is, is there, are there any options besides Boone or is that just, are we doing one thing? It's Doug's turn to pick and we're going to Boone. It's not Doug's turn to pick. It's somebody else's turn to pick. <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't see anything wrong with that. No, we, no, we'll leave it open. And, you know, we got the winter time to plan and we'll figure out what we're going to do. And then we could get, um, you know, Marie and her husband to go. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. And maybe yep. Scott L. too. I would like to request a stop at the Mass General Store. Yes, of course. We can do that. <laughs> and maybe some, someday we can even do a Motober in the summer and go up to Vermont because – that's the only time of year that it's not freezing at cold. It's <laughs> oh, man. If all of us descended on Vermont, how epic would that be? <laughs> it would be the motorcycle maple syrup fest. <laughs> state New York would be fun too, right? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like uh, upstate New York, Adirondacks. Like the whole Placid, area. Lake Placid is only two hours from my house. There wow. we go. There's Welcome the to Fools in the Finger Lakes. Do you think that <laughs> – Wes, those are lakes up in the Adirondacks. No. Yeah, I know where the Finger Lakes are. Oh, actually, sorry. the Finger Lakes are not in the Adirondacks. No, they're, they're not. not. No, they're I know. That's why I stopped myself. Me right now. That's why I stopped myself. I said, wait a minute, they're not in the Adirondacks. That's all right. But that would make a cool T-shirt, Fools in the Finger Lakes. Yeah, that would be. I called it. Fools in the Finger Lakes. Fools in the Finger Lakes. For the sake of time, we should be wrapping it up. Yeah, we probably okay. should. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think you can really it a little bit about the ride anymore. Hey, were we even? Did we talk about you, the ride? You guys went uh, to High Rock, right? We did, which was awesome. That was an amazing view. That was a great stop. Mm -hmm. I don't That's think cool. I've ever That's seen anything good. quite like that. That was really cool. That was one of my favorite spots on the ride with everyone, because um, there's all the graffiti on the ground, 
and everything. And I looked down and I saw something and I was standing next to Steve. And I go, <laughs> hey, Steve, look at that. And pointed down and he sees the ground where it just has written, don't be a <laughs> start dying laughing. <laughs> that's awesome (laughs) that was a good one (laughs) oh my god well i appreciate everybody getting together and joining up uh, joining us for this this was a it was fun to relive it a little bit and talk about it and and Mm -hmm. give scott a little bit of context to go along with all the video the the what would you say was 200 gigs of video or something 250 gigs 250 all gigs. told all told i'm just nice. now getting into the part now pretty soon where you guys's other cameras start to come in right yeah. alex's footage starts to come in and then wes's other cameras Wes start to creep at in yep. at harp at, yeah after lunch actually looks like but after, um one at, one at harper's ferry and one after lunch too one after lunch yep. yeah 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 though yeah but we'll get it the writing was just awesome like yeah, it was i amazing. never Never thought to go to Maryland. I go through Maryland, but to ride in Maryland, that, that little corner of Maryland, West Virginia, and the Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. Like, it's just gore. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I'm I, I'm like this isn't even that far for me because on a normal summer day, a 500 mile ride isn't that bad. But right, you know, when it when it starts at 38 degrees in one direction and it rains all day in the other direction, it's kind of a hassle of a trip. And it ends at 38 degrees. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the second time I've seen footage from Alex's that, that same area. And I'm recognizing a lot of the landmarks, you know, from the first time. And awesome. both times it's just gorgeous, gorgeous rolling farmlands and mountains and, well, hills. And just fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. You're very lucky to live there. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, we didn't do all the same roads, but we did a few of the same roads. Yeah, yeah. There was cool. a couple of the same, but yeah. I don't know if you guys could see it because you were you. I think you were in front of him. But one time, Berto went for a wheelie, uh, coming away from a stoplight, and he, I saw I saw the the rear tire load. You know how it it squats a little bit before the front tire comes up. Yeah, it, and it, then all, all of it, a sudden, the front end just slammed back to the ground. Mm-hmm. You know, and apparently his uh, his heated his throttle grip that that he had the wraparound heated grip had slid right off the end of the throttle <laughs> and so he's sitting there with the heated grip in his hand and not on the bike and so he had to real quick jam it back together <laughs> before he completely lost control yeah. of his bike yeah, yeah. i saw that, and that that's I'm a cool thing about uh, the thing about Berto's bike is that it was it's shaft driven yeah so it was like you heat hammer it and the and it just would shaft jack but then he would like get past the jacket and then the front end would kind of lift up. It looked so awesome. Yeah, it would kind of. It, <laughs> it was it was like. Hurt, hurt. <laughs> How's that again, Jeds? It's like. Hurt, hurt. <laughs> this is the front wheel. <laughs> There's your intro. <laughs> exactly. You get to use that noise for your censorship, Scotty. <laughs> Yeah, that's your, that's your bleep. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to drop off of here pretty soon, you guys. Yeah, we're, well, we're gonna keep go. talking if you want. All right. No. No. Thanks everybody for watching. Yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And watch for the simulcast. We're gonna try to simulcast this on multiple channels. So there you go. Well, by the time they see this, it'll be simo. It'll already have been simuled. It'll be simuled casted. The casted would have simuled already. So. Watch the simulcast, then go, go back. back and watch go it. Go back and watch it. <laughs> watch the same thing on five different channels. You'll That's love right. it every time. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's the same thing. <laughs> and this cut. is this is old. <laughs> what a crack! What is that? <laughs> oh, it's your arm. Yeah. You're holding something. <laughs>